Hello friends, welcome back. It's an update video. It's been a while since I really talked about Natalie, so I wanted to give a quick update and uh, to show how much work has been going on, even though I've not been making videos. A lot of things have been happening and Natalie continues to, to move on. What is it? Natalie is a Ruby uh, implementation. It is a compiler and it's written in Ruby and C++. And um, I don't know, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's uh, not really very serious in my mind. People ask me about this a lot. You know, what am I hoping to do with it? I, I just think it's a lot of fun. And uh, it's something I like working on in my spare time. So I'm not making any money from it. And I don't really plan to ever. Uh, I don't plan for it to take over the wor world, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, you can read about it at natalielang.org. Um, you know, people do ask like, what, you know, why are you doing this? What is the purpose? How does it better than, you know, Ruby or JRuby or Truffle Ruby or whatever? It's not, it's not in any way, <laughs> it, but it is unique and it is mine and, um, or ours, you know, there's, there's other contributors, of course. Uh, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. So you can check out this site just for fun, no really dot dev. And there's some other projects on here. Feel free to add yours to our list. Um, if you are into just programming for fun. So uh, that's that. Uh, the big news in, you know, in the last few months has been integrating uh, YARP, which is now called Prism. Back when I did it, it was called YARP. Prism is the going to be the Ruby parser that I think all of the Ruby implementations will end up using. CRuby, JRuby, Truffle Ruby, uh, so on and so forth. And we're on the list now. So uh, in fact, we're <laughs> because our uh, Ruby implementation is uh, is not as full featured and there's not a lot going on, we were able to integrate it first. So I think that's pretty exciting. Uh, and that was huge. That let us get rid of um, where let's see, uh, get rid of our own parser that I wrote, um, I guess over a year ago now, uh, that was not complete and was not fully, um, correct. And, um, I, I, it was a fun experiment and I don't regret it. Uh, but it's nice to not have to worry about parsing and let someone else handle that. So, um, yeah, so back to this, uh, let's see, uh, Kevin helped with, uh, a bunch of, just the migration process and getting us over to there. Um, this was me removing a whole bunch of just old translation layer and various things. So there's a lot of work that went into this. And then uh, as of today, we're on Prism version 7.0.17.1. So that's the, the latest version as of today. So that that's exciting. And what does that mean? Um, it just means more correct uh, parsing. So um, it means a really cool AST that you can look at. So if you do examples, hello world, um, you can see a very visual and an indented uh, AST, which is kind of neat. Uh, we didn't really have uh, anything this good before. Uh, we had um, we had S expressions and they were indented when you printed it like this, but it was kind of hard to tell what was what. So everything is named. And beyond the pretty uh, AST that you can look at, uh, there is... Um, a, a lot of benefit to using YARP in our own compiler in pass one, which is just the, the hugest part of our compiler. It's 2,200 lines. Um, and it, it made it so much more readable. Everything is named, whereas before all of the S expressions were positional. So you'd have to get the first item at something and the second item at something and the third item at something. And, and you had to know what those meant. And I was just constantly going back and forth between, uh, you know, just printing out debug stuff and testing it to see, you know, what, what am I getting back? Whereas with Prism, everything is named and everything's a real object. And, um, that's a huge benefit. And I, I mean, I'm just scrolling code here, so you you can take my word for it, but this, this is way more readable than it was before. And I think that other people could hack on our compiler, um, where we create these intermediate instructions, um, from prism. So we convert prism to our own intermediate representation. I think anyone can hack on that now. Uh, whereas before, I think it was it was pretty weird and opaque uh, how that had to be done. So I am really, really happy with how that turned out and the improvement to our code base. Um, and then there's, uh, like I said, there's just the correctness part of it that um, did you know, <laughs> did you know, uh, let's see, that you can do, you know, begin, uh, raise foo, 
rescue, let's see, rescue, oh, I mistyped this right, um, at bar, and then set an instance variable. I didn't know you could do that. Uh, let's just run it like this, Ruby Wat. Uh, yeah, and you could even set a class variable here. I don't think that'll work at the top level, right? So I'd have to do uh, foo def foo uh, and move this in there. Uh, but you get the idea. I mean, there's just stuff like that that actually that that didn't work. Oh, because I didn't call it foo dot new dot foo. Um, it's stuff like that that <laughs> I mean I. I didn't even know you had, we had to parse that because who, who does that? <laughs> but uh, that's the sort of thing that Ruby allows you to do is these just very flexible, I'll say, I don't want to, I don't want to bash it or anything. Uh, it's very flexible. And what you can do is uh, really the, the, you know, the sky's the limit. So um, not having to worry about parsing that and having it be correct is amazing now whether we compile that i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure we don't yet compile that um i don't think oh we do cool <laughs> okay well it's uh and the only reason we compile that is probably because prism gave me the node type and i was able to to do something with it yeah i don't know what else to say about that so uh, uh, that's that's a huge milestone to get to to use the community uh Ruby parser. Uh, let's see. Uh, other people have been working on Natalie too. Tim Craft came in one day and just dropped a date class. We had no date before this, so that was that was pretty amazing. Thank you, Tim Craft. And um, let's see. I've been working on. I did Dir Glob. It's not very fast the way I did it. I kind of regret doing it the way I did it, but it works. And uh, I'll probably come back and. Uh, work on so there's some optimizations that, that it, it could do uh the reason i needed um that oh i lost my tab where is it okay let's move this over here yeah the reason i worked on that and some other small things uh, uh implementing in the standard library was to get our self-hosted uh compilation back and um <laughs> since it's so slow i'm going to just kick this off in the background so if i do bin Nat and Natalie. Okay, let me explain what's going on here. So we're taking our um, compiler, which is written in Ruby. We're running it with C Ruby or MRI. Uh, so not our Ruby, but the official Ruby. We're running this one, and we're saying I want to compile Ben Natalie, which is the Ruby program, which is the compiler, and we're going to compile it into a binary. So I'm going to go ahead and kick that off while I'm talking. It takes a long time. Uh, our compiler is not amazingly fast, and there's a lot of optimization work that we that we can do to make that faster. But uh, anyway, getting getting to this point was huge, and uh, I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's so cool. Uh, it doesn't run everything yet. There's some bugs, uh, especially right now. There's a gnarly encoding bug uh with string encodings that i haven't figured out yet um but when <laughs> whenever that's done i'll come back and show you that it indeed can compile itself and um i think that that that's a huge milestone uh moving on uh herwin has i i just don't even know where to start herwin has been doing all kinds of stuff all over the place most re most recently in open ssl implementing a bunch of open ssl cipher and HMAC and just various things. And I think that is amazing. Uh, Richard uh, did singleton module. Uh, and I think, did he fix, uh, yeah, fix super keywords and added put C on string IO. And then that was all in like one day, just dropped three PRs out of nowhere. And then he came in and he said, hey, with just these small changes, he was able to compile public suffix dash Ruby which I've never used, but apparently it's a fairly popular um, parser for domain names. So you can get the domain name, you can get the TLD and the second level domain and TRD. I don't actually don't even know what TRD is. Uh, and so, yeah, that's written in Ruby and Natalie was able to compile that. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I never know. I, I'm actually kind of just nervous to try running some random you know library or program ruby program through our compiler because you never know what's going to break um but uh and and it really is a lot of things usually it's a lot of little things that we don't have but that list is really slowly dying i didn't show you this graph but these are the number of specs that we're passing 
uh, from Ruby spec. And the math here isn't quite right. I, I wouldn't read this as we're almost done. We're not. Um, there's some bug with how like some of the files are just crashing outright and they don't get counted. So, but if you just, you know, look at the up and to the right um, bit of that, it's, it's pretty encouraging. You can see day by day, these numbers are getting higher, except for I think one day it went down. I don't really know what happened there. <laughs> uh, but let's see, where were we? We're back over here. Did this ever finish? It did finish. Yeah. So if I look at bin nat, this is its own, um, dynamically linked, but I think it's only linked with Linux stuff. Um, I'm not really an expert on this, but it, you know, everything is self-contained, including, uh, the parser, let's see, the part, no, Prism is actually not, I think, I think we're still using FFI for that. Um, so we could probably, uh, embed, we probably could pack it into, uh, this binary. Anyway, I digress. The point is it's, it's its own file. And so at some point, some point, cross your fingers, we'll be able to offer, um, a pre-compiled binary that you could just download for Natalie and just run it and you don't need Ruby on your system at all. That's the, the end goal. Um, and it's, it's cool that it even works at all. It's just amazing. So I can still do that AST thing that I did earlier. Uh, if I can find that file, there it is. So, uh, it works the same. It's, um, it's just now not needing a host Ruby. It is its own, uh, compiled binary that I could just hand to someone on a usb drive or download from the web or whatever did i say usb drive who uses those anymore <laughs> uh that that's that okay what else um i showed you that uh let's see i've been working on a bunch of just random stuff uh, and in support of that self-hosted compile thing and then fixing just things I'm learning about Ruby as I look at Prism and figure out how Prism is parsing stuff. Um, fixed, uh, was this all yesterday? It was like a couple days ago. I fixed uh, keyword args for yield. Um, oh, okay. This was huge. I uh, was able to copy the pretty printer from CRuby from MRI and it works. We did have to I think a couple of those PRs before it fixed some, I think I was fixing this in order to make this work. Um, but this is dropped in verbatim uh, from MRI. All I did was add a uh, license header to the top of the file, but all of the Ruby code from the pretty printer works. So that is so cool. Uh, and we didn't have to implement any of that. So that's amazing. Uh, I do still like implementing our own stuff when we can, but um, I don't know. I, it's kind of a give and take. Sometimes you can up, you know, copy it from upstream and, and if it's pure Ruby, uh, that's a good goal to try to get that working rather than write it myself. Cause there's some Ruby in here that I just wouldn't write. And I, of course, not going to be able to find it right this second, but, um, that was why I had to fix some of, you know, have some of these PRs where I'm fixing, like, oh, you can pass keyword args to yield. Okay, I just, I apparently don't do that very often or ever. So I didn't know that that was broken. So it's cool when you can copy in, um, just like this public suffix Ruby, when that can just work, um, that's amazing. That's really, really cool. Okay, and uh, let's see. <laughs> we made it through October, Hacktoberfest. We made it through Hacktoberfest with only a couple nonsense PRs. Uh, this one just, I thought was funny. Uh, just added a, a link to go to the top at the bottom of the readme. I mean, who wants that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even understand. How do you, let's see, can you render it? Yeah. So, oh, wow. It's a great big blue arrow. <laughs> so, I rejected it. I didn't think that that was useful, but you know, you know, people will do interesting things for a t-shirt um, for Hacktoberfest. So uh, that's it. I don't know. Uh, what else, what else can I show? Um, is there any of this that I kind of glossed over? Uh, Herwin's just been doing a ton. Of, I didn't even really scratch the surface of all the PRs uh, that they've done. Let's see. Uh, it'll be like this. Um, here's object to hash. I mean, there's 415 PRs from Herwin. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, a bunch of open SSL stuff, some, some fiber stuff. Uh, uh, IO path. Oh yeah. Before that was a bunch of IO and file stuff. Um, just amazing work. And I cannot 
be more ecstatic about just the community uh, jumping in and thinking this is a fun project. So we've got 38 contributors and uh, I'd love to see that grow. I think that in 2024, um, let's see, we're kind of near the end of 2023. We could probably get a few more in this year. And I think we could get, you know, 10, 12, 20 more next year. Uh, that's my goal. I'd love to see that hit 50 uh, or more next year. And I, I think we can do it. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much the update. Um, I just wanted to brag on everyone doing a really great job and uh, just coming along in this fun journey with me. And uh, well, yeah, it, it's all about fun for me. I I just think it's fun. <laughs> people, some people do not get it. And, and I'm sorry that I don't know of a way to explain it other than that. Um, I don't have great ambitions. I just want this to be, um, good. <laughs> like I want to work on it. I want to hack on it. I want to find my boundaries. I want to push, um, myself to do something more than I thought I could. And, um, that's already kind of happened, but it just keeps happening. I keep thinking, Oh, I, no, I can do that. So I think that's what it's all about for me. So anyway, if you've watched this much of the video, thank you so much for being here. And, uh, I have an idea for the next video, but I want to get this one done first. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon.